Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be going over five key industries that you should be hitting right now with your chatbot services. Now we're also gonna be talking about why these industries are hot, specifically looking over their KPIs, which for those of you who don't know, are key performance indicators. And these KPIs are our rocket fuel when it comes to our sales pitches. If you can go into a client call knowing KPIs of a particular industry, you can go in speaking their language. And if you can speak their language, you become relatable. And that is how you're gonna get your point across and ultimately get your foot into the door with these companies. Now, let's get started. So we're gonna be going over five different industries today. And some of these industries may shock you. And I also know that a lot of you guys are targeting in one of these in particular so i've made sure i included it in here i'm not going to tell you which one you just got to watch it all the way through the video but let's get started with number one so number one is going to be e-commerce brands now a lot of you are only looking at customer support chatbots and luckily for you e-commerce is a great place to start if that is your goal now before we get into this one let's talk about the kpis for e-commerce stores what are they looking for what are their key performance indicators that if all of these are ticked they're going to be happy so their KPIs, they're gonna be looking at customer satisfaction score. They're gonna be looking at stock turnover time, maybe order quantity, order value, all of these different things that ultimately revolve around someone checking out on their store. Who would have guessed it? But this is great for us because now we can go into a meeting with an e-commerce store owner saying, we are building this chatbot to specifically help drive more conversions on your store. Now, what are the problems right now? Where are the bottlenecks with your products? Are they getting enough information on the product page? Are people trying to go to an FAQ and not all of their questions are being answered? How can we mitigate that? How can we remove that problem? How can we make it so that everything is answered on the website? Everything is there when a potential customer needs it and they can find every bit of information about every product on that store. Well, the answer is a chatbot and that is exactly what we can train our chatbot to do. So rather than just uploading the knowledge base, we can use the entire range of products on that e-commerce store and actually train that chatbot to be able to recommend products based on requirements or based on birthdays that are in a certain month of the year. Or maybe it's a gift shop and you have an AI chatbot that essentially asks you what the person likes that you're trying to buy a present for and then you can then recommend products based on that input and that data these are all really good ways for you to build chatbots around e-commerce stores and ultimately help them get to that end customer and that conversion now if we're looking at the other side of e-commerce ltv is massive which is lifetime value so when i was running e-commerce stores the biggest thing that we would focus on is email marketing and sms marketing on the back end of those stores we knew that if we converted a customer, we could actually spend more money than we would make converting that person from an ad into a paying customer because we knew that the LTV after that sale was much, much higher than their first initial order. So we would often lose money running the ads, but then we would make our money back on the back end of the email marketing. So why don't you tie your offer and your chatbot into the back end as well? Why don't you talk about email marketing and monitoring data and preparing sales copy and helping automate and optimize that entire process for them as well. So it doesn't just end at chatbots on their website, get creative as long as you know those KPIs and you can start to really play with them and think, okay, if I was in their shoes, what would I do? You're onto a winner. So let's go to number two. This one is gonna be digital marketing agencies. Now we actually work with digital marketing agencies right now and like e-commerce, they have very similar KPIs. So when I say digital marketing agency, I mean advertising agency, branding agency. Nine times out of 10, if we go to someone who's running an SMMA agency, chances are they know how to build a chatbot and it's probably not the best industry for us to go after. But we do currently work with agencies that are a little bit bigger, not really on trend and they don't have a team in place for AI integration and these different chatbots. So there are opportunities out there, you just need to know where you're looking. So their KPIs, customer acquisition cost, lifetime value again, return on ad spend, and they want to see engagement rate as well. Now, we've spoken about this before in another video, but what's super important for a lot of marketing agencies is being able to offer their clients something more than just a landing page. Now, right now, we work with clients optimizing landing pages and building landing pages for them for their marketing campaigns. 
Now, on top of that, how do we level ourselves up to become more than just landing page creators? Well, we actually implement AI chatbots and we implement AI lead generation tools, like I've spoken about on this channel before, that actually collect more than just email addresses and names from potential leads. We can go way deeper than that and we can almost have a scorecard with 10, 15 different questions that we get answered using the chatbot on our specific landing pages. So that in turn will increase our lifetime value. It will increase our client acquisition cost all because we have more data being collected. So it's not necessarily a direct correlation, but we can still link it in that way because we know that if we're collecting more data, we can see the exact demographic of person that is coming through on our ads or on our landing pages and the ones that are actually submitting that data. And then we can step back and we can go to their marketing agencies and saying, hey, look, you've got loads of people here that are all interested in this why don't we start targeting this interest on facebook ads or why don't we start creating content around this because you have a lot of people within this industry that are filling in your form and going to the next stage of your sales funnel do you see what i mean it's not always about how can you just add a chatbot to have customer support sometimes it's all about how you can collect data and that data is so valuable because that can be used in other efforts and other campaigns and all of that good stuff so that was number two which is digital agencies definitely definitely one to look for now number three potentially one of my favorites is going to be online education we all know online education is absolutely massive. There are a crazy amount of people online providing high quality education to people that want to learn it. The school system failed us, uni sucks. This is why online education for me is such a hot industry to get yourself into. I'm even deep in it and I'm a strong passionate believer that this is the future. So online educations, what are the KPIs for online educators? Well, this one's interesting because obviously they want to convert more people into their course or their mentorship, but they also want people to be able to complete the course. They want people to actually follow through with the mentorship and actually get value out of it. There's a crazy statistic that Basically, most people that buy courses don't end up even finishing them because they just get sidetracked and move on to something else. So this obviously doesn't reflect well on the creator because they potentially lose someone's interest whilst they're being educated by them, which is not good at all. This could lead to refunds. This could lead to people just moving away completely and just falling out of their sales funnel, if you like. So it's a real massive problem and it's something that we can help with chatbots. We can also collect data for feedback so we can make adjustments on these courses in real time. And then that is just gonna help with admin efficiency as well. So we can actually automate a lot of that process so we don't have to hire someone in who has to sit there emailing people, asking for feedback or chasing for reviews or responding to questions and queries we can set up chatbots for this. Now, I think a lot of you guys think that the word chatbot usually means it's a chatbot that lives on that website and it acts as a widget where you can type it in and it pops up a little chat box. Although that is the most common form of chatbot, that isn't the smartest way to do it. What if we could have a chatbot that sits behind the scenes that nobody knows is even a chatbot? This is how you can be positioning these bots too. This separates you from a lot of the other companies that build chatbots, because guess what? Chatbots have been around for years. I was using them when I was first dropshipping like six years ago. So what I mean by this is, imagine if I emailed you as a customer and I said, hey, I have this problem with my course. What does this mean? Or how can I get to this? Or what should I do here? What if that query then went through a Zapier flow got bounced into ChatGPT or a bot that we build on the back end with a knowledge base. And then that response was then sent back to that customer using an email. That person wouldn't have known that it was a chatbot and that person would have just received a Google notification from the course creator with the response to their question. Now that is just one way to look at it. And this translates across every single niche that we're talking about today but it is just another way to look at things. You don't always have to have it as an actual chatbot. You can build it behind the scenes so it acts as almost like this automated AI administrator, which I much prefer. So let's quickly get into the use cases for online education. Well, if there was a chatbot, just like I said, that helped answer questions in real time and acted as a personal coach to this person going through this course and whenever they needed support, they could message this chatbot and this chatbot would come back because it's been filled with a knowledge base all about this course. It knows everything about it. We've uploaded YouTube videos to it. We've uploaded documents and text files. It is literally an expert on this course that this client is going through 
well, it can now answer all the questions in real time for this specific client. So that is gonna help them progress faster. That's actually gonna help them stick through this course and hopefully finish it. And then we can also get this chatbot to actually ask for reviews and get feedback in real time. Maybe every single week we set it up. So this chatbot messages users that are following this course and asks for feedback. That can then be used to create more modules or create more courses and the list goes on. Now, obviously you could just put it on the course page and it can act as a living FAQ, but that's boring. We wanna get a bit more exciting than that. And those are the ways that I would be helping online educators if I was you. Now, the fourth industry is gonna be a little bit of a hard one to get into, but this is going to be crazy over the next couple of years. This industry is gonna be the healthcare industry. Now, I don't know about you, but in the UK, the NHS is a pile of shit. It doesn't work and you end up waiting seven or eight hours to get seen by a doctor for him to then be super rushed off his feet. He's got no time for you because he's got 50 other patients waiting in the waiting room and he's just like, yep, you're all good, sends you out. There is so much error that happens inside of the NHS. I have so many horror stories with family members and friends and it really just isn't a good place to be, especially when you're not feeling great and you have problems that you're starting to worry about and symptoms that are starting to occur in your body and it sends you into panic mode. I actually had this a few weeks ago. I was getting chest pains and I was like, what is going on? I tried calling doctors. The doctors were just palming me off, telling me to go to accident emergency. And I ended up sitting there for seven hours to find out that I had nothing wrong with me, which was great. That was perfect. But all the doctors were like, hey, panic mode, you've got chest pains. You're probably gonna have a heart attack. You better go. And when you're sat in a waiting room thinking you're gonna have a heart attack, that is pretty fucking scary. And uh, it puts a lot more stress on that person, which in turn makes them sick or could actually bring on something more serious. So there is a massive problem with the healthcare right now. And I know it's a global thing and I know it's in the US too. So what are the KPIs for healthcare? Now this list is obviously absolutely massive, but we obviously have patient wait time, we have diagnosis, we have symptoms that could be identified and worked on quicker. We've got patient satisfaction, we've got length of stay. They want people to go in and out quicker. They don't want waiting rooms filled with people. Obviously they've got mortality rates, but an AI chatbot can't really help with that. But there are so many different metrics that healthcare centers are locked into. Now for me, I think the obvious one is being able to actually diagnose and give advice without having to call an emergency line or go and sit and wait for a doctor. I actually had a really interesting call with a cardiologist the other day. Funnily enough, it was like fate had crossed paths because I was uh, having that chest pain before, but he wants to do exactly this. He wants to build out a chatbot that helps people that have chest pains. It helps diagnose their chest pains. It's trained on a knowledge base that is an expert in chest pains and heart related disease. Not only is this gonna save him so much time of potential clients that don't have anything wrong with them going in to see him, it's also gonna take a ton of pressure off of these individual patients and let their mind rest because they know that they have essentially been seen by this cardiologist who has trained this chatbot. And this chatbot can answer around the clock. It's gonna give you the time and it's gonna actually tell you what you need to know and give you the best advice. Now, obviously there are a lot of risks when it comes to healthcare. There are a lot of issues that could occur if that chatbot was to go wrong and start recommending the wrong things. So this is why it's important that you really, really, really work on your knowledge base and make sure that knowledge base is bulletproof. You know, if I have crazy chest pains and I go to this chatbot and say, hey, um, I have these crazy chest pains. And then it says, you know, you need to go and do more exercise because you need to get your heart healthy and fit. Like that probably isn't good advice, but that is all down to our knowledge base and that is what we control. So something to consider there, healthcare is gonna be massive and it doesn't just stop at doctors or surgeries. It could be dentists, it could be plastic surgeons, it could be anyone in the health industry that has a lot of patients coming in or at least a lot of inquiries. You know, a bot that handles inquiries and helps people book in and schedule appointments that is gonna be a game changer. And that is just something we're gonna be seeing over the next couple of years, I can guarantee you that. Now, the fifth and final industry I wanna talk about is something that I know a lot of you guys are focusing on right now, and that is gonna be realtors and real estate-based companies. Now, obviously, with property and real estate, those are very high ticket items. So it's super important to ensure that the customer journey from A to Z is handled professionally and efficiently. 
Now, a lot of the time, it's just one girl or guy on the end of a phone taking bookings and booking in appointments and viewings, and there is so much room for human error. Think about it. I know for a fact, when I went to buy this house that I'm in right now, I was speaking to a real estate agent, and they knew absolutely all about the house and it was not helpful for me at all and considering i was parting with a large chunk of change it didn't make this purchase very easy for me and it was super stressful and that was down to me having to work with a human to get any kind of answers especially when this human wasn't trained and they weren't very skilled at their job so what can we do here for real estate agents obviously we can create some chatbots that are loaded with the data on their websites, you know, rentals or houses for sale in the area. And then we can actually build custom searches for individual customers. So say if I went to a website and I said, hey, I have this budget, I'm looking in this area, rather than me just having to scroll through all of these photos of houses, why isn't there a chatbot there that can actually be my assistant, that can actually help me go through these homes and actually tell me more information. This is gonna save that real estate company so much time of me calling them manually and saying, hey, can I book a house for you in here? Because now, this chatbot's now gonna let me actually just make a booking with this house. It's actually gonna let me just place a booking, schedule an appointment, and then I can just turn up and meet the real estate person there. So there are a lot of different things you can do here for these companies, but this is something that could really work for a real estate guy. And these, of course, are conversations that we're actually having with real companies here in the UK. So I'm gonna be documenting that inside of the Discord very soon, and I should have some more content out showing you guys exactly how we do it from our ideation to delivery. The KPIs are obvious, they wanna sell houses, they want satisfaction scores, and they wanna make sure that the process of buying a house is easy. The only thing is right now, it's not easy and it's usually very painful. So build a chatbot that helps alleviate that stress for potential clients. And that in turn, is gonna help the realtors make more money and actually close more deals. So guys, it's pretty straightforward. Look at the KPIs of these specific industries, look at the KPIs of the industries that you're trying to work in, and then just reverse engineer that. Remember, if you can go into these meetings knowing the KPIs and really understanding the business and what their main goals are, that is gonna give you the best chance of actually signing these guys as clients. If you go in without any clue what they actually want to achieve within their business or what their core goals are, then you're gonna fight a losing battle and you're gonna be on the back foot. You need to be prepared for these meetings and you need this information under your belt. Hopefully this video has given you a blueprint and a bit of a structure in terms of how we look at things. Obviously there are hundreds of more industries where this could work in. So make sure you choose a couple and hit them hard. Become an expert and you will win. I promise you that. Now guys, if you did want to learn how to scout an agency and you wanted help from someone like myself directly, then you can join the inner circle. We are now opening up wait lists and you can find out more information down below. First link in the description of this video and you're gonna be able to join there and work with me directly on building and scaling your automation agency. If you're a business owner and you need help with AI and you wanna automate your business, go to the description of this video and you'll also find our agency where you can book a call with us and we can see exactly how we can help you. Guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I really, really hope it helped. If it did, smash the like button, leave a comment down below and make sure you're subscribed to this channel because you know your boy is coming at you with some crazy content over the next couple of weeks. Make sure you're in the free Discord too. AMAs every single week. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.